what's happening everybody? Welcome to episode 106 of the Games and Graps podcast. I'm Sonny and with me as always is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm doing no idea. How are you? I'm good. good All stuff. good. Happy it's the weekend. Got a three day weekend. Woo. Happy to have Monday off after Survivor Series. Nice. That's so good. That's, uh, that's pretty exciting. It's nice to have time off anyway. I oh, don't yeah. want to be at work. Yeah, no one to be at work. Work sucks. No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100% it does. <laughs> but <laughs> we're here with another podcast. What's this, three weeks in a row? Yeah, I think so. New record. We're, <laughs> we're doing pretty good. We we're doing pretty good. We're going strong at the minute. We're building Games and Graps as a, a brand. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> doing all that stuff. You can't escape us. No. Uh, social media game is on point at yeah. the minute. Even Finn is trying to get himself into social media properly. Yeah, trying to. Trying. To being, so, being social is hard. <laughs> being social is hard. Being social is hard. Have to talk to but people and stuff? Yeah. You'll get there. Yeah, one day. One day. One day soon. We'll get you there. You'll get, well, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> By the way, um, uh, so snapbacks, right? Help me understand. Oh, like, okay, right. All hats, all caps have the same snapback thing, have the same snapping backing mechanism right i've got a cap that has that so why are snapbacks called snapbacks if all caps have the same mechanism like that isn't the defining feature of a snapback the defining feature of a snapback is the front bit front flat bit so why isn't it called a flat front or front flat look i didn't invent the snapback and it's just one of them things that you're just going to have to deal with and understand that it's called a snapback and you can't change it. But I don't get it. I feel, I feel like the name Snapback is a word made up by Twatch to make themselves sound cooler than they actually are. It's like, yeah, boy, check me out on my Snap cap, Snapback in my pimped I think out full of yes stuff. What, I think like what needs to YouTuber. happen here is you need to start leaving the house. What? Does it mean there's, there's an outside the house? What do you mean? There is, yeah. You need to start leaving the house <laughs> and, um, you know, just... You know, it just just getting yourself into how normal things work. But it's a stupid word. I'm like old and I don't understand new stupid words. You're a stupid <laughs> word. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a great word. Look, it's a snapback, and that's the end of it. Oh, god damn it! It's flat front. From flat. <sighs> it's just the name for it. It's like it's like it's like the name for anything. But it's not though. It's uh, yeah. It's but you could question you, why is a mug called a mug? Because it's a it's a mug. Right, doing. you can't give me an answer. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> you, like, everything is called something for no reason whatsoever. But it's just a baseball cap. Why can't you just call it a baseball cap? But because flat. it's not a standard baseball cap. <laughs> Whatever. Fine. Fine. Okay. Look, I'm, leave the fucking house. <laughs> no. Start being cooler. Okay. I can't. That's never going to happen. I'm, gonna, I'm never going to be cool, but I might leave the house once or twice. Buddy. Okay, well, at least try Stand that. Back. Anyway, Fun flat. lots to talk about this week. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with promoting our selves. Okay. A little bit of housekeeping. Yes. So um, we're back streaming on Twitch. Finn streamed Shemu 3 last night. I did. And you can find us at twitch.tv forward slash games and graps. You can. Uh, we are on Facebook, we do have a Facebook fan page that we are using more and more now. Mm -hmm. And if you just type in uh, the Games and Graps podcast, you will find us. And on Twitter, we are at Games and Graps, which we are also using more and more. Yes. Uh, we do have an Instagram with the same at name. We We've do. not used it for a little while, but we'll try and get back into that as well. All right. I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you handle that bit. I don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe this could be part one of, you know, one of those things that helps you, uh, you know, be more social. Get used to socials a bit more. Maybe yeah, I take pictures of, pictures of myself wearing a, a snapback. Now check me out. I'm I'd cool. love to see you in a snapback. <laughs> Maybe it's, no, I've got a baseball cap. Maybe I'll just flatten that out. And like, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Snapback. Hey, that's, hey, look, you know what? Fine. Has it got the <laughs> things on? Has it got... What, what's, the, what's the back of it like? You know what? It's actually not a snapping back. It's, a, like, a, it's like an adjustable thing. Right. Well, then eat dicks. It's lost. <laughs> well, I mean, I've had caps... Oh, whatever. It's fine. Wow. There you go, that's it. You, you, you know, oh, it's actually, it actually doesn't. Uh, <laughs> uh. But I mean, most, whatever, it's fine. Snapbacks, it's good. All right, okay. Finn, where can we find you on your own personal 
social media? Uh, you can find me at the Finn Steel on Twitter. That's about it, really. I do have Facebook, but I don't really use my Facebook page anymore. Brilliant. But okay. yeah, Twitter. Um, Twitter is the main thing. Twitter is at the Finn Steel. Follow me, please. Thanks. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter is good fun as well. It is. Yeah. When people aren't being dicks on it. That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that on there. There is. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as well at Sunny Garner, which is my just my full name, really. Cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's it, pretty much. Awesome. And uh, don't forget, you can go over to thirteen ten apparel dot big cartel dot com and use the game, use the code Games and Graps at the checkout to get yourself ten percent off. How cool awesome. is that? Sounds good to me. You can buy yourself a look at a, a snappy pack. You can buy yourself a snapback. Yep, and a t-shirt and a hoodie. They do some really cool stuff, so uh, go check that out and get yourself some money off at the same time. Yeah, do it. Just by being a fan of this podcast. Yeah. Check us out. We're becoming like a, a, a media empire. Yeah, we are. Yeah. The games and graps, they can't stop us. We're taking over the no, internet. No, not. We are taking over everywhere. Yeah, we are. Finally, I mean, we're, we're finally getting a hold of this. So we've, we've been doing it for a while now. It took long enough, but we're getting there. Yeah. We're, we're learning. We are getting there. We're starting to, we are learning. Definitely. Anyway, on with the show. Yeah. Finn, what if it was fun? I was about to call you then. <laughs> I'm not fun. Come on now. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> fun Steel. Yeah, 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 that's me. That's my new, that's my new name. Come, going on. Yeah. Um, so, what have you been playing this week, Finn? Um, more Death Stranding. Still weird okay. as hell, but I love it. Still, still enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very much so. Um, it's addictive. Oh, it sounded, you know what? It sounded like there was a question mark in there. But really? yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, it's very addictive. You know, you, you finish one order and mm. you see another order for in a slightly different place. So maybe I can do that on the way to my next one. And then you get another one from there. So maybe I can go for this place. It's like, I just do this one more delivery and then I'll stop. And it goes on and on and on. Um, mm. But no, it's like, it, as I said, it's not necessarily all that fun. But at the same time, that's I think that's the point. It's a, it's addictive. You like you want to succeed. You want to like get to that next outpost, and you want to you know put down more stuff to help people, and you want to use that stuff that people have you know given you and get get those likes. You need the likes. The likes are important. Please like this podcast. It's all about the likes, just like on social media. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's a message they're trying to get across, which is cool. See, Death Stranding is teaching you a lot about life. I think. I think so. Yeah, it's it's teaching connections. you some valuable life lessons thanks to Hideo Kojima. <laughs> yeah, cheers, cheers today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool it's, it's, yeah I just love like everything about it like the connections and now, idea. now if we can just get Sam a Bridges snapback <laughs> that'd be great he has a baseball cap he does but he doesn't have a snapback so if we can get him a snapback and uh, then we'll be good yeah it's a solid gold snapback yeah why not <laughs> cool uh, um, I, I'm still enjoying it as well you know I, I think it's uh, I think uh, we obviously had a conversation about it in our discord um, the other day about how um, much of a slog it can be. I mean, it's it, hey, look, it's a great game. I said it last week. I, I think it's one of the best games this year, and it definitely is. Oh, yeah. um, but it's it's very different to anything else you'll play in the sense of um, it's, it's a big AAA title, but you know you don't feel like you need to just sort of just bash it all at once. No, I, mean, like, kind of, I feel like you can dip into it. I mean, the, the story is very simple, made complicated. You what you're, mm. you know, the long and short of it is you're connecting America. Bad things have happened, and that that is it. So, I mean, the, the story isn't overly complicated. So, I feel like you can jump in and out uh, whenever you want to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are people out there who just hammer through it. I feel like those people yeah. kind of missing the point a bit. <laughs> like, if you like, if you been, if you 100 percent the game already, if you already have the buttons over you, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, it's a game you need to yeah, take I your time with. It's a slow burn. Yeah, definitely. And it's just something, it's, it's something that you need to really take in. You need to absorb it all. There's so much to to see and to do. And it's just, it's a beautiful world. I said it last week. I mean, and it, and it really is. It's a beautiful world. And it's an amazing piece of art that I think if you rush through it, it'll lose some of that. It'll lose some of that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't that, know what the word I'm looking for is. But either way, it will yeah. lose some of that. Some of that atmosphere. Not magic. And, you know, also, I think it's one of those games, because it is quite repetitive in the way that it plays and, you know, the missions are very samey. I think if you plow through it all at once, you'll just, you'll just, you'll just drain. Yeah, definitely. And you'll just be like, oh, I can't wait to get this done now. <laughs> so I think, you know, because it is so big and it is mostly the same, I think that you, you really need to just, you know, play it along with other games. 
Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, uh, I'm playing, start playing just player. I just started playing Shenmue, as you said earlier, on, on stream. And what do you think to it? It's good. I love it. Um, it is exactly what um, I want it to be. It's Shenmue. It's Shenmue from, like, the Dreamcast days. Like, people... It is. Yeah, it's like, same boys, actors, same controls, same everything. Um, I feel like people playing Shenmue for the first time aren't going to are going to hate it because they're not going to you know get it <laughs> um so there's people i recommend playing the first two games that one playstation and xbox i think now um yeah for sure i mean you, there's no way you can jump straight into the third one no. not a chance because it literally follows straight on from two yeah literally, yeah literally um um so there's no way that you know th- th- this isn't going to win any new fans i don't think because it's not it's it's not a modern game no no if you understand not. what i mean by that yeah, right definitely. um yeah death stranding very much a modern game mm. Shemu sounds and plays like a game from 20 years ago. It really does. Hey, because someone. essentially that's what it is, but with fancier, fancier graphics, just about. Exactly, yeah. It's like <laughs> the voice acting is really fun, like, hilarious, like it was back in the day. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Like these clips of audio doesn't all, doesn't all like, match up. It's like, hey, where can I find so-and-so? It says, uh, so-and-so, you can find him over there. It says, oh, over there? Okay, thanks. It's like... yeah. <laughs> I find uh, uh, Rio to be incredibly rude as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he just that comes right up to you and says, "Hi, I'm looking for so and so." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or I need to ask you something. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. <it's>, yeah. <laughs> Why are you talking to me, stranger? <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. But, I love it. But it's great, and at the same time, it's exactly what Shemu fans wanted. So you know, uh, in that sense, I mean, it's going to make uh, uh, us happy, at least. You know. Exactly. Yeah. I just like, I just like what it is. And I can't imagine it's going to review well, but it doesn't matter because that's not the point of it, I don't think. No, I don't think it is either. I mean, it's definitely, it's, it's aiming for a, a specific fan base. Oh, yeah, big time. And that's the Dreamcast fan base of 20 years ago. Yeah, um, 20 years. You know, if people have played it since and enjoyed it, then that, that, hey, that is great. I mean, they brought the uh, remasters, quote, unquote, <laughs> earlier uh, last year, back in the last year, or was it earlier this year? I think it was last year, wasn't it? In the last year, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that might have won over some new fans, but I doubt it because, you know, they they don't play well. They're yeah, not. They haven't They well. played well 20 years ago. They were revolutionary. Yeah. It's like a, now, it's not mind so much. But yeah, it's... But, you know, great game. Absolutely. I love it. I'm not going to hammer through it. I'm going to try and get the Platinum Trophy, even though I do have to catch a thousand fish. Jesus Christ. But it works towards I don't it. know why they've done that. Like, show me one and two. Uh, they have really easy trophy lists. Yeah. It's like, okay, now I'll catch a thousand. Like everything else about it, it's like it's very straightforward, but like a thousand fish, really? Like, I, I caught a couple. <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe it won't be that bad. Maybe we'll catch a bunch, of the same, bash, a bunch at once. Like, the wood cutting, you get like a hundred per go. So doing a thousand wood isn't going to be any trouble at all because you get like 10 times and you got a thousand. Um, but with fish, you only catch one at a time and it takes like a couple <laughs> minutes per time. It's like, bloody hell. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think the game is going to be that long. I mean, the others are like 10, 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine it will roughly be the same. I think 99% of playtime will be catching fish. fish. Oh, 100% it will be. Because yeah. by the time you finish the game, you know, 10 hours, great. And then you're going to spend the next 40 hours catching fish <laughs> because you only catch one at a time. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Still, it's good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's a good. It's a good looking game for the most part as well. Yeah, it's great. It's not hitting, you know, the insanely high standards of the likes of Death Stranding or God of War or anything like that. Oh, yeah. But I don't think that was ever the intention. And I think it would lose a little bit of its shemuneness mm-hmm. if it did do that. Yeah, exactly. It's supposed to look, you know, slightly janky. It's supposed to, you know, it's like exactly, as you said, it's like a 20 years ago, um, brought into the modern era. And that's, yeah. that's exactly what it should be. That, yeah, to be honest, uh, and I think. You know, it's not, it probably sounds like that we're making excuses for it, but we're not. <laughs> but this is exactly what we've wanted. It, it, it's Shenmue fans are a, you know, and Dreamcast fans in general. We're we're quite a rare breed. We really are. We've waited eighteen and years for this. Eighteen. It, we didn't feel like eighteen years. We're old, but yeah. eighteen years. Like if they, if they'd have presented us with a Horizon Zero Dawn style Shenmue <laughs> game, we'd hate it. We'd have been fucking livid at that. Yeah, that is that's not what we wanted. Yeah. No, what great. we wanted was a conclusion to the story. Exactly. And, and if that's what it. they're going to give us here with the same gameplay and the same voice acting, like if they'd have changed Rio's voice actor, that oh, would have God. been crap as well. Yeah. It's like, oh, who's this guy? This isn't Rio. Come on. Yeah. Just a 
fake person. Yeah, his voice acting is far too good. Come on. Yeah, but you know, it's great fan service. It's awesome that it's got a sequel after eighteen years, mm. and I'm just happy that it's it's there. You know. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe it, we finally like have a Shenmue three. He's like, wow, no, it exists. You know what, when, I, when I was playing it the other day, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, crazy, but great. I love it. Yeah, oh, it's awesome. I mean, I was in complete sort of like disbelief and happiness <laughs> that I was playing it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like, awesome. yeah, okay, I played through Shenmue 1 and 2 recently, but it's surreal to be playing this one, like an actual new Shenmue now that we're not familiar with. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy, but I'm happy. I'm happy that it's here, and I hope the people that um, have, you know, gone out and bought Shenmue or they backed it or whatever, um, I hope that you are enjoying it as much as, you know, we are. Yes, me too. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, else? We'll do a full, we'll, we'll review it properly <laughs> when uh, we've both finished it. I think that's probably fair. Yeah, good idea. But um, first impressions, very, very positive from Shemu fans. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and I think our opinions are the most important opinion on this. Oh, of course. Because like nice. I said, I mean, like we said, if you're new to Shemu, this isn't going to be w- what you're after in a video game. No. This is, yeah. You're not going to get it. <laughs> but, but that way, you're going to like, why do people like this? I don't, well, this is so bad. But... Yeah, it's so very niche. Oh, yeah, big time. Big time. But yeah, I'm happy. Awesome. Right. Uh, anything else? Playing anything else? Uh, have you, are you done? You, are you done uh, with your playing? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I think that's about it. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Ooh. And it's awesome. It's so good. Uh, um, it's like Uncharted and Tomb Raider made a baby <laughs> with Darth Vader. And now we've put, they've like shot out a Star Wars game. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's really good. Um, the you'll like it even not being a Star Wars person. Cool. Um, it's just it plays really well. The mechanics are great. Uh, the story's good, and we finally got a good Star Wars game. And not only that, we've got a really great third person action adventure story game as well. Yeah. Um, the outside of, you know, the the Sony ones that are obviously all great. Um. But it, yeah, it's just so good, dude. It really is. Like, everything about it just makes me happy. Like the leveling up, the combat's great. Um, just the the traversal is awesome. The graphics are great. Voice acting is great. It's just a really great game, you know. And uh, I think it's one that even if you're not a Star Wars fan, you should definitely have a look at because it's um, it's easily one of the best games this year. And we've you know we've had some good titles this year, but this is easily one of the best ones. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, I, think, last... I think Respawn have done a fantastic job. Oh, yeah. Respawn are pretty, pretty great, aren't they? Yeah, man. I mean, oh, yeah. Just look at their Metacritic uh, average. Yeah, seriously. I'm trying to think what the what? last game Respawn made was. Uh, the Apex Legends. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Titanfall guys, aren't they? Yeah. Awesome. I think I've always played another massive game on my backlog. Massive backlog. Titanfall 2. It's like I started Titanfall 2 way back. Got There's like one really difficult trophy. Like, you have to beat the training mode in like some ridiculous time. Like, well, I'm going to knock that out first to get out of the way. I did that, and then never played it again. <laughs> the Platinum is 100% achievable for you then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because that, that's the hardest trophy by some distance as well. Oh, yeah. People online would be like, oh, God, it's so difficult. Like, it's no, ridiculous. It. I just can't believe they even put that trophy in there. But... Yeah. That's, I, I like, that's the I thing. Guess... I, like, I like these challenging trophies. Like, I'm, like, I'm going to do it. I can prove to myself that I can do it. And it's like, it's like back in the day, remember, um, what's the trophy called? Modern Warfare 1. The original Modern Warfare. Yeah. Uh, Mile High Club. Um, got to beat like the train, well, some like the airplane level in some ridiculous time. I was like, was that Modern Warfare Two? Uh, no, Modern Warfare One. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it had trophies on PS4 on PS3. So oh, yeah, you would sorry, have played it on 360. Yeah, achievement on 360. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that was so. That's probably one of the hardest achievements slash trophies I've got in a game. But uh, yeah, it was, it was like the first time I would, like became an achievement hunter. It's like was that? It's like just to prove myself that I can do it. And it's like. Oh, I did it. I can. What else can I do? What else can I challenge myself with? And uh, I do think that's the thing with ch- uh, trophies. I mean, you know, so, some games. That's why I don't really think much too easy platinum trophies. Yeah, it's cool to level up your, uh, you know, your trophy level or whatever. But there's no real sense of achievement there. Because, you know, it's in the word itself is there. It's achievement. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's, it's not an achievement to sit there for two minutes and platinum <laughs> or get a thousand gamer score for a, a game that, you know, people are only selling. To make money off the fact that you can get an easy platinum or a thousand gamer score from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Side tracks. Um uh, Star Wars. How was it? <laughs> great. Really, really <laughs> great. Um I'm I'm just 
I, I, when I play it, it's just one of those games. It, I, I, it's like it, to me, it's like when I play through Uncharted, you just want to see the next bit because you know it just it just plays so great. It's you know there's games do play great generally these days, but right. sometimes you know you need a gameplay you need gameplay to hook you. Yeah, absolutely. and like yeah, have the mechanics to really make you want to to come back, and this definitely does that. And what's also cool, you can mainline it, but there is, you know, like there is, you know, it's, it's quite a, an open space. It's not open world by any stretch because, you know, there is the, uh, you know, the sort of the invisible wall that you oh, can't get past. Yeah. Uh, so it's not open in that sense. So it's not open like Death Stranding or Red Dead, but, you know, the areas are fairly big and there's like Tomb Raider, there's like optional stuff you can go and do. That's cool. I like that. Like optional so if yeah, you like, areas. Yeah. So if you like discover powers that you didn't have before, you can go back to the areas and then you can sort of use the new powers that you've acquired to do the bit that you couldn't do before. Yeah. Very Metroidvania ish. Uh, I like it. Yeah. And sort of access the areas that you couldn't access before, you know, to, to get pickups and all that sort of stuff. So cool. Um, but it, it's really, really good. And I, I can't stress enough how important it is um, that you can go into this not being a massive Star Wars fan. Yeah, uh, it's like a lot like um, uh, Force Unleashed back in the day. Like uh, everyone's going nuts. Yeah, exactly that. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, hey, I'll give it a try, and yeah, it was great. I loved it. So uh, yeah, I think it's definitely a game I'll pick up in the future when it's on sale and stuff. But uh, yeah, sounds good. Definitely do. Yeah. yeah and it's a really, good really thing good. so far. Add, add it to the uh, add it to the never ending backlog. Yeah. <laughs> Get it on there. <laughs> yeah. That's in the pile. Um, I've also I'm so close to finishing um, Pokemon Let's Go now. Ooh, nice. Uh, I have all of the gym badges. Awesome. And uh, now I'm just on my way to fight uh, the Pokemon League people. Sweet. Pokemon. So not not long left. I have ordered Pokemon Sword. Uh, it should be here fairly soon, like nice. today or Monday. Awesome. Yeah, so awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to, <laughs> looking forward to, to finishing this one and playing that one. Awesome. Excellent. Can't be Pokemon. No, that's it. But otherwise, I've not really been playing a, a great deal, to be honest. Well, that, that, to be honest, that's enough, I think. I think, you know, yeah. playing Death Stranding, um, Star Wars, and, you know, Shenmue, and <laughs> Pokemon, I think it's just enough. Yeah, I think so. that's enough. I didn't need more than that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did you buy Frozen Wilds? Um, not yet. I bounty though. You, you, when you're never going to play it? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to play it in like seven years. <laughs> so it's there, I'm pretty play. Have you played Horizon Zero Dawn at all yet? Uh, no. Not what you don't even put it on. No, nope. I bought it oh, and dude. then just never played it. I ate myself. You know, I, I'm a I'm a massive hypocrite here, but <laughs> you, I think you'll you'll really love it. I think it's great, but I'm never going to finish it now. I've just <laughs> I've resigned myself to knowing that I'm never going to finish that game, and it hurt. It, it pisses me. I, I piss myself off to say <laughs> it because I know that it's a phenomenal game yeah. and easily one of the best PS4 games. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've, I've tended to get like that. So I played, started, and then I'll just you know I was never going to go back to it, even though I loved it. It's like yeah, it's too much time has passed. What game's that? It's like this game, a bunch of games in general. Like yeah. A big list of games. Yeah. I just, I've, I've, I've annoyed myself with it because I would love to go back and play it. Yeah. It looks great. I'm not but, entirely sure what the game even is, to be honest. I'm, I'm intentionally like trying to avoid like any sort of spoilers or like any gameplay trailers because I want to go in completely blind when I do finally get around to it. Well, dude, it's been out like two <laughs> and a bit years now. You've avoided spoilers this entire time. Uh, I, I think you're good now. Yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty good. I want to add that to the top, top of my backlog list. Like well, a, few, a few months now um, until any more like big games come out, so I want to spend yeah. my time busting some backlog. And also, it's it's one of the best looking games you'll play. It's oh yeah, it it is truly stunning. It really, really is. And it's a game that I would love to go back and play. I just, I just don't think I ever will, and mm -hmm. that annoys me because I know when a sequel comes out, I'll want to play it, but I'll piss myself off because I haven't done the first one. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know, maybe I should set myself that as a goal. Go back and finally finish Horizon Zero Dawn. But yeah, maybe. Why not? I probably won't. But <laughs> I would love to. I will, honestly, I would love to. Fair play. Cool. Um, right. Oh, yes. I've got a bonus question for you to try and get your score Ooh. up. Oh, yes. Excellent. Right. Right. Here we go. So there was... <laughs> you were talking about Dead Space a little while ago. Uh, there's yeah. Four, there's three mainline games. Dead Space 1, 2, and 3, obviously. Yeah. But there was a fourth Dead Space game that came out on the Wii and also I think let it board to PS3 for the better to move um, but what is the name of that game is it A Dead Space Extraction B Dead Space Extinction C Dead Space Extermination 
or D, Dead Space Examination? Uh, I, uh, I think it's B. What was B? Uh, B was Dead Space Extinction. I think it's that. Okay. Well, I can tell you that the name of the Dead Space game on the Wii is Dead Space Extraction. Oh, I fucking... I've played it as well. <laughs> it's an on-the-rail shooter, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's good. Yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't remember. Yeah, that's fair. We try. At least, at least we'll get there one day. We'll get you we'll get your points up. Maybe. They did bring it out on PS3, you're right. Yeah, I thought so they it was did. compatible with the uh, the move controllers, I think. Yeah, that was it. Cool. Well, you tried. Next time. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sucking. Sucking so bad. That was a hard one. Because Extra- extraction is a weird name for, for like a subtitle. Yeah, I just couldn't remember what the, the, the game was about. I remember playing it because I remember it being the on the rails shooter one, but yeah. um, I couldn't remember for the life of it. I knew it was something like that, but I just couldn't remember which one it was. Yeah, that's fair. Like, I had to look it up. I've got it on my, my shelf. I was like, oh, yeah, Dead Space. What was that called again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's all right. We'll get there. We'll get you up there. We will. Yeah. Cool. All right. So what else we got? Um, oh, yes. The Google Stadia came out. And Yeah, you wouldn't know it. Yeah, it's just kind of came out with like a, eh, here it is. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I cancelled my pre-order. Um, when I when I saw the negativity sort of surrounding it and people saying it didn't work that great, I was like, mm. oh, okay, Ugh, you know what? I can't be asked for this. I don't have enough time to to want to faff with it, and it'll just annoy me if it doesn't work and I'll spend money on it. So yeah, um, yeah. it's just stuff like you know, I've got really good internet, but if you know, if it says on there, you know, don't stream, so, so someone else in the other room can't watch a movie <laughs> while can't stream a movie while I'm playing Assassin's Creed or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think that's good enough. If um, if you're going to bring out a platform that is streaming and streaming only, um, it needs to be capable of dealing with other things going on in the house. I mean, you see like these broadband adverts now all over the place. Like, oh, somebody can do this in one side of the house and then somebody can do this in the other side of the house. Yeah. But, you know, on the instructions to Stadia, it does say, you know, avoid doing anything else while you're playing Stadia because it, could fuck up your gameplay experience basically yeah like, imagine uh, and being that to in, me just isn't good enough yeah like, imagine being in the middle of a tough boss fight saying oh i've got this i've got it and then all of a sudden the message appears i'm sorry I'll, we cannot connect to the server at this time please try again later it's like no <laughs> it's like it's not as you say it's not good enough you can't have that no it is nowhere near good enough um and it's a real shame because you know it's a platform that sounded like it had real promise yeah but, you know, I've idea. read things like um, people are pulling out, developers are pulling out of development for Stadia already and um, because of the technical difficulties. And I don't think it's going to sell well. And I, again, I, it's a real shame because, you know, you want every platform to succeed in some way. Um, there definitely is a market for game streaming. 100% there is. But this, it just... It's you know it's been released with some of the features missing and mm. that were promised at launch and stuff like that and it just to me isn't enough. There was no hype about it whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, you know in the in the cup in the you know the the weeks in the running to its actual release and yeah. Um, well, I didn't even yeah, know it was, like, it was coming out. It on me, I think. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even know it was coming out until it was out and people started talking about it. I was like, oh, it's out already. Okay, and like. All I've heard is problems. It's like everything I've heard is negativity, and it's not very little positive about it. Yeah, I've seen no. I've seen very, very few positives. And again, you know, it is a real shame that it's the case, but it's yeah. You know, it is what it is. I mean, it's um, you have to make sure your technology is working before you release it. Absolutely, because if you don't, the internet will slaughter you, and uh, that will affect you. And it has affected them and will continue to affect them as well i believe yeah like i don't know who's buying this either it's like yeah, everyone's already got these games like the list of games is like games from like months and years ago it's like people would play these games i've got a list here we've got uh assassin's creed odyssey it's like it's a good game but uh attack on titan the final battle 2 sure really game to put on there but why not uh destiny <laughs> 2 it's like okay destiny 2 is free to play now but okay sure uh, farming Simulator 2019. It's like uh, 19. Sure. 2019. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh wait, that is the newest newest one actually. Yeah, I think that's the newest one, isn't it? I think. Yeah. It's, it's just farming Simulator. Sure, why not? And all the games they have <laughs> on there. Um, yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy 15. You know, good game. 
came out a couple of years ago, but good game. Everyone's already played it for sure. Yeah. Uh, Football Manager 2020. Um, Grid 20. That's, a, that, that's quite a big one for people yeah. um, who don't want to play it or can't play it on a PC. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, you know, it is, is a, it huge... a console seller? No, probably not. <laughs> no. Um, but you said it's huge. People love Football Manager. Um, so, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, we've got the new grid that came out recently, which is decent, a decent game, but it hasn't got like super decent reviews, but it's new at least. Uh, I think it got good reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's got a stadia only mode as well, which allows uh-huh. up to 40 cars in one race. Uh, something. It's not too bad. Yeah. It's is something. it enough for you to go out and buy a stadia? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got a game I haven't heard of called Guilt, spelled G Y L T. No idea what right, it is. Okay. Uh, Just no. Dance 2020. Which is on everything, literally everything, including the Wii. Yep. Uh, another game I haven't heard of called Kine. K I N E. No idea. Right. I uh, have heard of it, but I've, I can't, couldn't tell you what it's about. Yeah, same. Uh, Metro Exodus, which, again, good game. Came out years ago. Um, is that the, the recent one or? Um, the most recent one, I believe. Okay. Uh, this year? Uh, not this year, no, I think a couple of years ago. No, it wasn't. I think I'm sure it was this year. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of this Metro. Hold on. Uh, we got Metro Redux, which is the the two previous ones that were remastered and put on PS4 and Xbox One. Oh yeah. And I think Exodus came out this year, but I don't think it did that well because it hit Game Pass really quick. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, I think it might be right there. I was thinking of the old ones. So uh, similar names though, so easy mistake to make. Yeah, yeah. Um, got Mortal Kombat 11, which is good. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, NBA latest one, two K twenty, sure, cool, yeah, sports. Fine. Uh, Rage two, which is, is cool, fine, fair enough. Um, well, three two many games. Again, it's on, it's on it's on Game Pass. Yeah, again, yeah. Um, and we've got three two many games. <laughs> uh, three more two many games. Atlas twenty two, uh, Tomb Raider original, Tomb Raider. Well, just the trilogy, the recent trilogy. Um, it's all good games, but it's like out of twenty two games, three of them are Tomb Raider. It's like okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. We've got Red Dead 2, that's a big one. Uh, yeah. Samurai Showdown, the most recent one. Thumper, which is that little indie, indie, uh, indie game. And the new okay. trials. I've got it up here. Oh, yeah. Uh, new trials and the new newest Wolfenstein, the co-op one, which nobody likes. So, cool, right. It's so, a mediocre lineup. Yeah, nice, nice selection of games. Look, if you don't want to go out and spend a load of money on a games console, then this probably is for you. If you're going to sit cool. there and have it plugged into your front room, um, you know, connected to your, your Ethernet because it do, again, that's another thing that's recommended to connect the Google Chromecast thing to an Ethernet cable. Okay. So cables everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, if if you don't have a game console and you think this is going to work in your favour, it's a cheap jump in price point. Then okay. I th- I mean, I think that's probably who they're aiming for. They can't be aiming at the hardcore here. I mean, I was very interested in it, and I thought, this is going to be cool. I can have it plugged into a TV somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And then just jump in and play games whenever I want. But, you know, after seeing that it just can't handle it, that- that's what, you know, sort of really soured it for me. And it's a shame because it's a-, it's a really exciting prospect. But then you've got, you know, PS4 with PlayStation Now, which is, you know, the, the catalogue for that is growing, and it's already tried, tested, and works really well. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, you've got Project X Cloud coming and the mm. chances are it's coming to um, almost all platforms. Oh, yeah. And you'll be able to play, you know, Xbox exclusive games through Game Pass and all that sort of stuff. So That's pretty huge. Um, is there a need for Google Stadia right now? No, but I don't think Google will give up on it that easily. I think they'll push it and push it until it does reach a market that it's intended for. Yeah, like it's good. It's a great idea. It's poorly executed, but as you say, in it the seems future, like it's poorly executed. Yeah, yeah. In the future, this could be huge, and it could take off and be awesome. But right now, it's not worth it. If it works, in theory, it's a it's a, it's a very cheap alternative to uh, everything else because you know the idea is it can it could in, eventually it could go up to eight K. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But I mean, there was always going to be teething problems at launch. There's, there is for everything. Oh yeah, but um, you need to make sure that it, it that it is capable yeah more testing i think was needed just give it a bit longer yes uh but if you know it's out in the wild now all they can do is tweak it to make it better and give the features to people that wanted the features yep and we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see how it grows and 
you know, I, I hope the people that have been really looking forward to it do eventually get the experience that they were hoping for out of it. Yeah, I think it will eventually. It's going to take some time. Yeah, but at the minute, not good, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we've got uh, gaming-wise for now. Everybody's got their Black Friday sales on, pretty much. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, PlayStation then a pretty um, huge one. Yeah, PlayStation is pretty good, but the the European one, or the English one, always shit. Yeah. In comparison to everywhere else. Like, I've seen that Death Stranding is $20 on like the American one. Or, really? Uh, and then here, it's 35 quid. Wow. Why? That's crazy. I don't get it. I just don't understand why the difference. Yeah, it's, that doesn't make sense, does it? I don't, yeah. There'll be a reason, I'm sure of it, but... I just don't understand why, because people, but Sony aren't stupid. They know that people are using American accounts that shouldn't be. No, <laughs> that's true. But, you know, or accounts from different parts of the world that they shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they still let us get away with it. And we can buy, you know, credit for other countries from websites. So it, these things aren't difficult to get around, but that's not the point. Why? There, there are some people that cannot be asked without stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like when it's one of those things it where was, you shouldn't be doing it, but at the same time, players aren't going to stop you because it's making them money. It's like, is it? Yeah, the, the way to stop it is to bring everything in line. But yeah. I mean, that there has to be a reason. If somebody knows that reason, I'd be happy to know it. But I just think it's stupid that if a game is twenty dollars in one region, why aren't they price matching it? Even if it was twenty quid, that'd be fine. Yeah, it's but yeah, exactly. You know, twenty dollars is like what? Fi- almost you know, fifteen pounds, fifteen, sixteen pounds, something like that. Yeah, crazy. Oh, well. But. Who knows? It's, it, I just find it bizarre. Um, I've not looked at the Xbox sale yet. I've looked at the Nintendo one, and look at the. You realize how much garbage there is on that store. Yeah. Oh yeah. Outside of their original games and a couple of, um, like the, the, don't get me wrong, there are some real gems in there, as far as indie games go. But they will allow anything on that store. Yeah. What's we could mean, bring yeah. out a game of me and you. Uh, having a, a shitting race <laughs> a, and they would put it on the store. Sonny and Finn shitting race and they would have it on the store for 89p and you know it'd be on the new games tab for a week and then it will vanish because a thousand more terrible games have come out the week after. Yes, yeah, so if you need to get in touch with the game developer make that happen. Well, any, Sonny any and game, Finn shitting race? Yeah, if any, if any game developers listen, listening to this, uh, make it happen. Come on, let's do it. Yeah, we could have like bonus unlocks as well, like the people in our Discord. So we could have Chris and Viz, like they could be unlockable characters. Exactly, that'd be great. Yeah, we could have Kay and we can have Steve and John. We can have all of them in there. Yeah, you know what? Sold. I'm buying it. We, we need to make this happen. Let's make this happen. Game developers, if this, if there is for some reason a game developer that listens to this, uh, the Sunny and Finn shitting race, um, you know, should should probably happen. Like a fighting game, but cruder. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Black Friday deal was awesome. I've actually bought one. I bought the LA Noir VR game. Which is oh, did you? 15 quid off. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to play it actually because it looks amazing. It looks hilarious. Remember the videos that uh, the videos that you tagged me in were just absolutely outstanding. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's is so it funny. the same version? Uh, yeah, I think so. Pretty much the same thing. Just on PlayStation oh, 4. <laughs> Can't wait to look. Yeah, that's probably that's definitely worth a look. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for gaming. I don't think anything else too exciting has happened this week. I mean, uh, you know, we're approaching the end of the year now, so um, gaming news will sort of start to thin out as the end of the year trickles on. Yeah. I think it'll pick up again around March. March is ish. March? Yeah, nothing really really comes out in January. Like oh, this year, we had like the Resident Evil 2, I think, came out in January, and then nothing else. A little bit. I can't think of any yeah. any new games that are coming out any anytime soon. No, I can't either. I mean, to be honest, game of the year list. I'm gonna have to go back and look through what actually came out this year. Yeah, yeah, same. Like I know what big because, like, big three, but like anything after that, I was like, what else came out this year? Yeah, there's been a hell of a lot of games come out this year, and so I think it's um it's, it's going to take a bit of research and a mm. bit of remembering to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, compile a list, which we will, of course. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, look forward to it. I think what we should I've got a, I've got a cool idea for a pre-recorded podcast to bring out over Christmas while we have you know a week off or something hmm. uh, that I'll run by you by text later on. Cool. Okay, sounds good. Exciting. Mm. Mm. Right. Let's move on to uh, wrestling. Cool. Wrestling. Um. So, Raw was 
fine this week. Mm-hmm. Because I've still got the Survivor Series invasion thing going on, which I really yeah. hope ends after Survivor Series. Like, as good as it's Me been, too, yeah. it's been really good, fun, and interesting this past few weeks, but it needs to end after Survivor Series, otherwise the whole grand split has been pointless. And the women's NXT as well, which you don't want. I do, I do think it will end. I think, uh, I mean, I, I think the whole brand supremacy thing is stupid because, um, you know, the brand split has only just, and the draft have only just properly happened. Mm. So how loyal can you be to, I mean, apart from NXT, you know, how loyal can you be to Raw or SmackDown or, you know, the brand that you've been assigned to during the draft? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, Corey Graves said it on the, uh, the WWE podcast. Uh, the after the bell one that they do now. Oh yeah, and he's he even he said it's like it means absolutely nothing. Give give them a reason to fight. Like you know the the winning brands get championship shots or yeah, so, you know so, something like that. You know instead of it just being well we won back to back to normal now. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, right. Yeah, that's weird. That's a good point. Um. So I mean, I mean it, it gives them an excuse to fill TV with this stuff. Yeah, there's a bit of a cop out in that sense, you know, because you know you can have a match that really means nothing, but then the excitement starts when you know your favorite NXT guys come in or people from other brands come in and start ruining the matches and stuff like that. So you you can really fill a lot of TV with just nothing, just brawls and mm. promos from other brands and things like that. So it's it's quite a uh, although I've enjoyed the build up, I thought it's been fun, um, but you know I can I can give or take the brand split stuff. Uh, sorry, the brand supremacy stuff. I don't care about it. Yeah, um, no, you know I care because you know um, I've been watching NXT since the very start. So you know I want to see NXT do well, and I want to see them and them guys pick up a win. But will. as far as Raw and SmackDown goes, I couldn't give two shits. <laughs> exactly. I, I, what I want to happen, whether it will or not, is for NXT to have a clean sweep because that would bring more eyes on NXT. Look, look how good NXT is. Watch it, please, main <laughs> main audience guys. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think knows. I think that's an idea from. I think that's you know part of the idea of having NXT involved mm. is to get more eyes on NXT. Yeah, uh, it worked worked this week. I mean, I know you know it wasn't a. <coughs> excuse me, just uh, drank coffee and it went down the wrong hole. That's not a real <laughs> thing, but you know. that's what people say. So it's... there you go. Um, wait, wait, put the coffee. Which hole are you putting down? I've got a funnel and I'm putting it into my bum. Is that not oh. the right thing to do? No, no, that's, that's why I do it. Oh, right. Okay. So it's going in the right hole. Yeah, so we're correct. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, so, so, you know, this week having the main roster guys, um, you know, got more eyes watching NXT. Mm. And uh, I, it wasn't a conventional episode of NXT in uh, the sense that, I mean, there was some fantastic wrestling on the show. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Um, the Revival versus uh, the Undisputed Era was great. Was so good. The few minutes of Adam Cole, sorry, Ricochet versus Matt Riddle that we got was awesome. Yep. Uh, Viking Raiders versus Forgotten Sons was surprisingly brilliant. Yeah, it was, yeah. So, uh, you know, in Adam Cole versus um, uh, Dominic Dijakovic in the ladder match was great as well. So, oh, yeah. you know, NXT had its very typical in-ring action. Um, but, you know, there were, it, it was separated by the Raw and SmackDown invasion stuff. Exactly. Put Revival but, um, on NXT, please. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and I think it will go back to normal next week. Yeah, I because you know, and, and I hope the audience continues. Do, do I think it'll continue to be AEW in the ratings? I, I don't. I don't think it will at all. Um, but I think it, it, you, the difference will be a lot closer. Yeah, I think it will even that's out be- eventually. Because the thing is, a lot of people, I mean, we say this a lot. We said it before NXT went to TV that a lot of casual WWE fans like who watch Raw and SmackDown every week, they don't watch NXT. A lot of them don't even know what it is. Exactly, yeah. They know they know it's sort of there, but they don't really know what it is. Because it's on the yeah, WWE yeah. network, but now it's on TV and it's accessible for, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't get more accessible than the WWE network. But you know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, it's in more it's in more people's faces when it's on TV and not sort of tucked away on the WWE network. Yeah, exactly. Need to, need to. Uh... So... Yeah, it needs to teach people what it is. Like, look, this is this isn't just like a third useless brand. This isn't two or five live. <laughs> you know, this is a proper, you know, third brand which is trying to push. Yeah, and it's better than the world. So, hey, hey, parents, sick of watching, <laughs> you know, nonsense on Raw and SmackDown? Well, there is some cool wrestling on a Wednesday on NXT. So come and watch that type thing. And I think, you know, it's a good idea having NXT involved in Survivor Series, and mm. I don't think it will affect. Um, NXT in a negative way going it can only be a positive in my opinion for NXT going forward yeah um, 
because of the exposure that it's had. I don't think you'll see main roster people turn up on NXT. Um, I can understand why people would think that the cogs are now ticking in Vince McMahon's head, but I don't think um, Triple H and Shawn Michaels and the likes, who the other the other people who have a say in NXT, would allow like a main roster takeover of NXT. So I don't think you'll see like Ricochet and people like that on NXT every week. No. I do genuinely think after Survivor Series. Um, everything will go back to as it was. And this will just strictly be a Survivor Series brand supremacy thing. Yeah, I think you're right. I hope you're right. Fingers Until crossed. next year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, one stupid thing that happened in war was uh, Seth Rollins and Andrade were an awesome match. Uh, mm. And then that was interrupted by, of all people, uh, Lucha House Party. He's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucha House Party is turning here right now? What's happening? But no, it's just like a SmackDown thing. Like, yeah, it's stupid. I don't, that's that's the thing I don't understand. The 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 picking of superstars to invade is 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 baffling. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's like, like the Heath Slater and stuff coming down to beat up the undisputed era. It's like this is stupid. <laughs> so dumb. So stupid. Um, and, you know, I, I thought you know when the Lucha House Party came down naively, I thought, oh, you know, them Mexicans, they're going <laughs> to side with Andrade. We're going to get that Mexican faction that was talked about all that time ago <laughs> that was supposed to be with Sin Cara and stuff. And no, the SmackDown faces mm. of the Lucha House Party um, just attacked Andrade as part of brand supremacy bullshit. Yeah, it's stupid. Boo. I do think they'll have another match down the line and it'll be awesome because that, that was a great match. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> as much as Seth Rollins is fairly disliked at the minute, <laughs> um, you know, he's still obviously capable of very good matches. Oh, yeah, he's great. And Andrade's awesome. I see him being a huge player in WWE. I hope so, anyway. Absolutely. And Zelina Vega, I don't know. I mean, like Zelina Vega. Well, Zelina Vega's great. I mean, she, without Zelina Vega, Andrade wouldn't be in the position that he is now, I don't think. Because I yeah. think she, because she can talk. Oh, and yeah, he exactly. really can't. <laughs> because, you know, English isn't his first language. And that's fair enough. I'm a firm believer if English isn't in your first language, you need a valet. And yeah, sure. I, you know, Zelina Vega is perfect in that sense yeah this is great um so yeah i mean it, uh, i as much as i've enjoyed the build to survivor series um i'm now excited for beyond survivor series so more eyes on nxt raw and smackdown can sort of go back to normal and you know try and build properly um towards the royal rumble and then from the royal rumble towards wrestlemania and make raw and smackdown means something separately because you know as soon as we got the brand split in the draft all this you know the survivor series stuff really started happening so that there wasn't really enough time to allow either raw on its own or smackdown you know in its new home on fox to, to really breathe properly yeah because as, as soon as we got it it was taken away because of the the the, uh, the brand supremacy survivor series build so um i want i just want to see what the rosters can do separately yeah, because you know, two, three or four weeks just isn't enough time. You you need to now sort of when Survivor Series is done, you build towards TLC, um, and NXT can go and do what they do and build towards the next takeover, which will imagine will be Raw Rumble weekend. Hopefully. Um, so I just I just want to see the rosters breathe on their own. Raw yeah. and SmackDown. That means I mean NXT was doing a fine, perfectly fine job on their own. Exactly. It's like you said, it's like it's not been long enough. Like it's like, oh my god, Seth Rollins is on SmackDown. It's like, well yeah, four weeks ago he was on there every week. It's like it's not that big of a deal. Exactly, yeah. So it's, it's, it doesn't mean as much, you know. So if Seth Rollins hasn't been on SmackDown like when people were coming back to NXT and it was like this is their first appearance on NXT in four years, you're like, Oh shit, has it been that long? Yeah, yeah, like Finn Balor. But like Yeah, but when it's been like four days <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Since you you know, it just it doesn't mean a thing. So yeah, you're absolutely right. um I think everybody now after Survivor Series needs to stick to their own brands and then, you know, really give us something, give us a reason to care about that brand specifically. Because if I could see Seth Rollins on SmackDown, I probably wouldn't, you know, and if I was a Seth Rollins fan, which I am, by the way, I'm just saying like hypothetically. Yeah, of um, if I was a Seth Rollins fan and didn't have a chance to watch Raw, but I knew it was going to be on SmackDown, I'd just watch SmackDown. Yeah. Because, you know, I would have time to watch that and, you know, vice versa. So... Yeah, I just want Survivor Series to be out of the way. As much as I've enjoyed the build, and I'm as much as I think the show is actually going to be great. Oh yeah, it'd be awesome. I right. um, I just want to. I'm I'm excited for Beyond it. I'm excited for things to just get back to normal. Yeah, me too. It's going to be a good weekend of wrestling. I think. War mm. games, war games tonight, and then Survivor Series tomorrow. It's going to be great. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we'll obviously give our predictions for them shortly. Yep, yep. But before that, 
I'm going to talk to you about AEW. What did you have you seen this week's Dynamite yet? I have. What do you think to it? I like it. It's all good. Uh, Chris Jericho again, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, the match is always good. Uh, taxi matches still again, kind of the same as every week. It's good. Too many high spots. It was fine. Um, yeah, um, I thought. Um, Ray Phoenix and Nick Jackson mm. had a great match. That was great. Yeah, that was awesome. Also, awesome really, to see really... him like in, as single in the singles match as well. And into that often. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Ray Phoenix is one of the best wrestlers in the world. I uh, have been lucky enough to see live him versus Will Ospreay. Nice, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and it was just, it was, it was a, a great spectacle by two great athletes. And you know, the style of wrestling that those two are capable of wrestling, there is definitely a, sp- a place for that. But they, what they do is they, they can integrate many different styles. Yeah. Uh, because they're that well-versed in in all said styles. You know, it's just easy for, the, for them to go out there and put on a great match. You could put you could go... You could probably have them in a singles match every single week, and every single week they do something different. Exactly, yeah. It reminds you of, like, Keith Lee versus Dodge Kravik on NXT. They had the matches Absolutely. in three weeks in a row, and it's like every match was amazing. Like... Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, so they're capable. They've got such great chemistry, and they could just go out there and put on a great match any time needed. Exactly. And so that, I was, that uh, was cool. Yeah, I think it was his first or Matt Jackson's first match as a single competitor in however many years. Like, it was amazing. Like, he hasn't lost a step singles wise. Not at all. No, I think if you're a great wrestler, you're a great wrestler. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Tag or single. And the Young Bucks definitely are great wrestlers. Yeah, like, like crazy good. Yeah, re- insanely good. Um, what did you think to the battle royal that they had? The, uh, yeah. the it was like a twelve man battle royal, but they're wrestling for a diamond ring, is it? Yeah, not, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Like, yeah, they're wrestling for a non-existent diamond ring. It's like, okay, sure, why not? It's just mm. like what's fun that like the match itself was fine. It's just like the reason for them fighting just didn't make sense. Like nobody really cared about the diamond ring. It wasn't even there. No one saw it. So, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and then nobody uh, I either. actually <laughs> I like the battle royal itself, and I like the idea behind them, re- f- like having a battle royal for something. Yeah, but a diamond ring, ugh, yeah, it doesn't really mean anything to anybody. Um, I'm not saying they should have introduced like a battle royal championship or anything like that. No, no. but um, you know, maybe like a a tar- I don't know, a title shot or something. I mean, a, a diamond ring literally means <laughs> less than nothing to to fans because. Exactly. Um, like who cares if Billy Gunn comes out wearing a diamond ring or whatever? <laughs> exactly. It's like you know, know. I, so that that I thought was um a little bit short sighted. I think from AEW's perspective, but yeah, and also there were two winners I, somehow. Like uh, Hangman, uh, Adam Page, and MJF both winning. It's like oh, what? Okay, and then they have a match like next week to divide who wins the non-existent diamond ring. It's like yeah, uh, yeah, okay, sure, that doesn't make sense, but why not? Yeah, I, I just I just didn't understand it really. I mean, I like the idea of, the, and uh, I thought the match itself was actually a lot of fun. I just didn't really understand the point of wrestling for a diamond ring. Mm. I, I, that's that's the bit I'm struggling with. That's the only bit I'm struggling with. I just don't get it. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think that sort of stuff really resonates with people because I don't think people care enough about it. Yeah, exactly. Like if the winner of next week's singles match was the, you know would shoot them up the rankings and give them a number one contender match to Jericho's championship or something. Um, then I think people would definitely care more because, you know, MJF could win and all, I don't know. I just, I mean, also, the long and short of it is a diamond ring sucks. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It didn't mean anything. Um, let me talk about Billy Gunn for a second. Okay. Dude is in shape and holy shit, Crazy. he's fucking massive. <laughs> you, didn't, you, you, like, you didn't realize it. Like watching like back in the old days, watching um, DX, but yeah, he's dude's huge. It's crazy. He's crazy huge. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, he came down to like some like weird DX type music. <laughs> yeah, like uh, off brand DX. This is yeah, like... and like we like the uh, the distortion thing on the uh, the screen in green as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's fair enough. You know, it's actually he's known for you know being a DX. He's not really known for being Mister Ass. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's just, it's... But no, it's cool. But... I liked it. I like I like the battle royal itself, and I like the idea of I like the idea of it, hmm. and them fighting for something. But I want that something to not be a diamond ring that I don't care about, and nobody will care about. Yeah, like a title shot would make perfect sense, but yeah, it's, who knows? Well, it's like it's, it's 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 not really that much different to these Saudi mania shows. People competing for a trophy <laughs> that no one 
honestly gives a shit about and that you'll <laughs> likely never see again. Yeah, you know? it's like people complain about that and then AEW does it. And it's like, oh yeah, it's great AEW. It's like, yeah, come on. Come on, guys. Well, it's like that fucking Battle Royal belt, the Royal <laughs> Rumble belt that Braun Strowman won. That has never been seen again. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> it's really stupid. I, I, I don't know. I don't like things like that. I think it's it's gimmicky and doesn't really resonate with people. But um, you know, that's not me taking away from the Royal Rumble. I thought the Royal, the sorry, the Battle Royal. I thought the Battle Royal itself and everyone in it was good. Yeah, me too. Agreed. Um, I thought the AEW Women's Division had a better outing this week uh, with mm. Britt Baker and uh, is it Shida? Um, sure. Can't remember. Can't remember name. Hikaru Shida is that her name? I think so. I thought they had a good oh. match. Um, I think Britt Baker's getting better. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of, you know, the dentist gimmick. Like, I know she's a dentist, and it's, you know, but it's like, that's not really a decent gimmick. It's like, um, uh, uh, what's Kane's name before he became Kane? Isaac Yankum. Oh, um, Isaac Yankum. <laughs> yeah, like, he was a dentist, and it was terrible. Uh, I know it's not the same thing. Like, um, the difference but, uh, between Glenn Jacobs and <laughs> Britt Baker is that Britt Baker actually has a doctorate in dentistry. Yeah, yeah, of course. But <laughs> it's, just, it's just a weird thing to be have a, as a gimmick. Uh, I think they're just playing on it. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I personally don't mind it. I don't need reminding every 30, uh, 38 <laughs> seconds on commentary that she's a dentist. <laughs> yeah. Because we get it, all right? But um, yeah, I, I don't really mind it. I think I think she's very marketable as a wrestler. Hmm, my as, um, I think, yeah, she's a great looking girl, you know? Uh, she really does look the part and she, she can wrestle as well. Yeah. Um. I just, you know, they're, they're still, it's going to take a while for them to really build that women's division to something that's going to be um, marketable to everybody. Yeah, it's going to take a bit. Like, people are used to, like, amazing women's wrestling on NXT and stuff. And the just isn't there yet. It's going, to, it's going to take a while. But I think they will get there eventually. I, I think WWE um, has actually set the bar quite high for women's wrestling. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um. Don't get me wrong, the, the women's wrestling in Japan obviously is great because we've, you know, look at all the talents that have come from there. Kairi Sane, Asuka, uh, Io Shirai, oh, yeah. um, Riho, just, the, you know, all the, you know, those guys, they're, they're all great wrestlers. But um, wrestling is very much storytelling. Uh, and people like to not, I mean, obviously you can tell a great story in a wrestling ring. You know? But at the same time with that, people want to have a story told to them like with promos and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just how the American audience has been accustomed. Uh, it's just what the American audience has, has gotten accustomed to. Exactly. Yeah. It's, um, hmm. it's only, and again, it's that's only... probably WWE's fault. But you know, Maybe. people need to hear people talk, and it you know, um, some people might disagree with that, but I think just to get a bit of character behind them, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's something AEW doesn't do super well. It's like the promo stuff. But I, I, I get it. They're trying to be different. Like maybe, maybe they don't need the promo stuff, you know? It's like, but at the same time, you kind of need something. So I don't know. I think that's something they'll they'll figure out eventually. I mean, like Awesome Kong, right? Um, her gimmick is now with Brandy, and mm. Brandy will be uh, undoubtedly the mouth, mouthpiece for that duo, even though, you know, Kong is fully capable. Yeah. But, you know, th- they're establishing their gimmick. You yeah, know, they're evil. Mm. They take the hair of the other the other ladies. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I keep going back to Riho here because, yep, great wrestler, super talented in the ring, no doubt about it. But yeah. we don't really know much about her. Exactly. Yeah, it's just kind of turn up. It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm small. I can still win. Hey, look, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a wrestler. I'm a women's champion, and I'm small, and I'm a good wrestler. <laughs> that, that that for people, it just isn't enough. Yeah, you need. That's all we know. You need a bit of context there. So I think they need to just start giving us a bit more in terms of story. Make us care about the people that, you know, you're having competing for the championships. It's like Hikaru Shida. Yeah, great wrestler. But what do we know about her? Yeah, nothing. Unless you've sort of studied tapes and tapes of her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, unless you're like an um, New Japan fan, like you're not going to know who these people are. Well, not even New Japan. I mean, you know, because New Japan don't actually have a women's division. Oh, really? Not New York. Really? <laughs> not, not, not New Japan, other Japanese, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. There's a lot <laughs> of women's mean. only promotions that side of the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, But I just think to integrate th- these people into to the American audience, 
Um, they just need to give them just a little bit more. And I think WWE does a really good job of that because they give them the, you know, the gimmicks straight off. Mm. Whereas AEW, they're bringing these people in fresh with the gimmicks that they already had, where they've came from. And they're just expecting people to resonate with, you know, to, to really sort of get into them straight away. Yeah. And unfortunately it just hasn't worked with the women's division. Um, because everybody is much of a muchness, if you know, if you know what I mean by that. Yeah. The- everyone's very, everyone, everyone's very the same. Exactly. Yeah. They're all very similar. I don't really know anything about anyone really. Um, and I, I'm not knocking anybody's talent as from a wrestling perspective, because obviously they're talented. Otherwise they wouldn't be, uh, performing at that high, higher level of professional wrestling. They just wouldn't be. Um, but I just think, um, where, I, wh- why, where I understand what Kenny Omega is trying to do with the women's division. Um, he's trying to give us something different. I just think to get people into it more, they need to um, show that these wrestlers are characters and people as well and just let us know more about them to give us something to care about. Yeah, I think I think he feels, because he knows who they are, let's get everyone to know who they are. It's like... Potentially, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Potentially, and that's... That, isn't the way to go about it, but that's them being very new to this. Exactly. Yeah. This is, you know, everything's a learning curve. I mean, yeah, you've got your veterans, Chris Jericho and stuff like that. And those people, they're, they're going to get people on seats and people tuning in because people know who they are. Yeah. Whereas with the women's division, people, you know, it, it's disrespectful to say it, but you know, and you hear it, used to hear or hear it all the time. Like, Oh, okay. This is, this is my time for a toilet break. Type thing. <laughs> yeah. Like the divas, you know, and I, divas. I don't mean that in, you know, a completely disrespectful manner. Cause like I said, they are very talented in mm. the ring. It's just that it, I find it very difficult to really care about. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, like, a lot of the men, they've done a fantastic job already. I mean like that Wardlow person that's, uh, that's come in and is now MJF's bodyguard. Yeah. It's great. Uh, he's the muscle and MJF will be the talker. Yeah. Makes sense. So already there you go. That's fine. That's just your character. Yeah. Character, estab- character established. We get it straight away in one swift move you've come in to defend mjf you're going to be the silent strong man you know which has been done a thousand times in wrestling <laughs> but it still very much holds up you yeah, know definitely um and the, the, the you know i think the entire men's division to be honest they've all got their own identities and everybody um comes across really well and you, you know you do start to pick your favorites because you you can identify with one character or the other character and they've done a very good job in building the men's division which of course you know is 90 percent of the program yeah, yeah pretty much so now for that other 10 percent, which is the women's division invest more time into building those characters especially the women's champion we should care about the women's champion but i don't no nah, same here i think yeah right now the women's division is like an afterthought like they built all these all these men's division it's like okay we've got the awesome men's division oh yeah we need women's division okay yeah just do that it's fine just throw them all in there yeah just just spend a bit more time on it you know get 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 us Get you know, let us get to know who they are. Exactly, I agree. Um, because you know, I could boo Rio for a you know, I'm not supposed to be a face, but <laughs> you know, you can boo her. Cause I don't know anything about her. Who cares? Yeah, it's like we don't know anything. But you know, I, I expect these things to come with time. You know, that they, they are all very new to promoting uh, and stuff like that, and they'll, they'll get it, and I'm, I'm sure they will. Yeah, every but time. That, that's that's the only bit of the show, in my opinion, that needs a lot of work exactly as you said they're new to, new to this whole thing it will take some time to get everything you know in place but they'll get there yeah um also i thought the balance of the commentary was better this week yeah yeah no I'm, uh, I, thought J- I thought jr was good this week yeah awesome yeah cool right that, that'll make some people happy <laughs> yeah yeah uh awesome so uh war games let's talk about that uh, let's NXT, we've got this. We've got this like weird build going on right now because you have, you know, War Games teams teaming up, and then our Survivor Series, you got them going against each other. It's like ugh, two different, uh, two different storylines going on at once. This is a bit weird. Yeah, because it's weird that they're having. It's a shame that the shows are on different. Uh, sorry, on the same weekend because yeah. if they were on separate weekends, we might have had a different build. But everything's been a little bit convoluted. Ooh. Um, I, but we've, you know, I, I've no doubt that it's the NXT will put on a great show tonight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, let's do some predictions, shall we? Absolutely. Cool. So the first match we have on here uh, is a pre-show match. Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott is going to face Angel Garza on on the uh, pre-show. 
Man, these are two guys that I'm really into. Yeah, um, I think both are super talented. Isaiah Swerve Scott uh, was the uh, Evol- Evolve champion. Oh, yeah. Before coming to NXT. And Angel Garza, I think, is somebody that they are going to push to the to the hilt. Oh, yeah, he's great. I love, I love his character. It's <laughs> so good. Great charisma. Um, really talented in the ring. This should be a really special match. I'm... Uh, because um, I think they are going to push Angel Garza to the moon... Or at least as far as they can. Um, I think he'll be the one that picks up the win here. Yeah, I agree. Um, Because Swerve's been on a good roll as well recently, but I think Angel Garza will be the one who picks up the win. uh, Yeah, absolutely. I I agree. He's he's great. As I say, they're pushing him to the moon right now. And yeah, I think he's uh, on his way to the main event. I think so too, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, that that match he had with Leo Rush last week uh, was fantastic. Oh, yeah. They put on a really great show. And he's been very good every time invoked a crowd reaction which you know in 2019 is quite difficult to do yeah yeah um because there are so many wrestlers around you know um so for him to um use his gimmick to his full advantage and get a crowd reaction from it uh, i think he's done a fantastic job and um, i see him being a big star i really like him me too awesome uh next match i have on it um is for the the winner challenger to nxc champion adam cole that's a rival series Interesting. Yeah. And it's uh, Pete Dunne versus Killian Dane versus Damien Priest. <sighs> Did you know what? This is tough to call. Mm. Um, My heart says Pete Dunne. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do it. I would love to see Pete Dunne win and then wrestle again at Survivor Series. Mm. That'd be awesome. Pete Dunne is Triple H's boy. There's no two ways about it. Um, Adam Cole is supposed to be a heel. True. Um, Killian Dane is a heel. Also true. I think... I think Damien Priest is a heel, although I can't really work it out. Yeah, it's kind of in between the two right now, isn't it? So the logical winner for me is Pete Dunne. Yeah. Longest reigning WWE champion of the modern era. Hmm. I think that makes the most sense. And, you know, Pete Dunne and Adam Cole could tear the house down at Survivor Series if they're given enough time to do so. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going for Pete. I'm going Pete. Cool. I'm tempted to go Damien because... Again, he's being pushed quite heavily right now. Yeah, I, 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 and I can fully understand why you would go for him as well. It definitely entered my mind to go for Damian Priest as well. Um, again, you know, super talented guy. Yeah. Um, and he's had some really great showings on NXT recently as well. You know, he's he's come out of um, a spot that, you know, I just thought he was going to be another generic, uh, just another generic guy with tattoos. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he looks a bit like, looks like still like Roman Reigns basically oh you go another another Samoan Roman Reigns yeah that, that, that kind of per- that kind of wrestler yeah that's but he's really surprised but, me I mean, <laughs> doesn't mean that. don't get me wrong he's been in there with Pete Dunne and Pete Dunne you know can get a good match out of anybody I think oh, yeah. absolutely but he's really surprised me and I, I, I don't get me wrong I wouldn't be against seeing Damian Priest versus Adam Cole uh, to be honest, I probably wouldn't be against seeing any of them versus Adam Cole but yeah. I I want to see Pete Dunne versus Adam Cole yeah, and also, again, also Pete Dunne and Killian Dane are all kind of feuding right now. So I can see Priest getting a bunch of that, and then Pete Dunne and Killian Dane will have a feud going forwards. Um, Understandable, yeah. Yeah, so I want to say Priest. Okay. Cool. Uh, then we have another one that's going to be blooming awesome. Uh, Matt Riddle versus Finn Balor. Whew. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good weekend. I mean, this 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 weekend is, is crazy. <laughs> you know, um... Uh, I mean, I mean, all fingers point to Finn Balor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree with that because you know he's fresh. He's come back uh, of injury, back to NXT. Um, this is first match back as well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, as much as I love Matt Riddle, I, I think he will be the one to take the loss here. I think um, Finn Balor wins. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I can't wait for that match. It's going to be awesome. Oh God, it's going to be so good. I just, yeah, you know, I, I just, I love the way that NXT gives their matches time to breathe, mm. and it really just brings out the best in the superstars. And I can't wait to see the best of Finn Balor because we really haven't seen it for the last couple of years, few years since he went up to the main roster. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's been through injury or just poor booking or whatever, um, we just haven't seen the best of Finn Balor. And I think now he's back on NXT, we definitely will, and this is going to be a great start. Oh yeah, so cool. Or even to heal as well. It's great. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Then we have uh, the War Games matches. Uh, first one we have is uh, Team Champa versus uh, the Undisputed Era. Yeah. Um, so Team Champa are one person down at the minute. Uh, 
Yeah. Who takes the spot? Hmm, that's a question. Um, I was trying to think. Who else is there? My pick is Velveteen Dream. Ah, uh, yeah. You haven't seen him for a while. No, that's it. We haven't seen him for a while. I don't know where he's been or what he's been doing. But I think Velveteen Dream um, would be uh, would be the biggest name that I can think of off the top of my head to take that spot. Yeah, that, that's a good pick. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Yeah, I can't, I can't see anyone else who else would, like, jump in. Unless... Okay, I've got a different pick. I'm going to say Johnny Gargano. What, he's not really injured? Is he... I don't know, because he was... Uh, yeah, I'm going to say he's not really injured, because I think it's too convenient that he'd be injured after that attack. So, yeah, I'm going to say Gargano. We'll, we'll okay, wait, wait, okay, wait, okay, wait, yeah, okay. Wait that side bet. Okay. Cool. Um, hold on. Wouldn't surprise me in the slides to see Johnny Gargano come out at all. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Oh, oh yeah, great. Who do you think is going to win out of the uh, War Games match? Mm. Oh, you know it's tough because um, I don't want to see anyone lose. <laughs> I want undisputed era as momentum to keep going. Mm. But you know they 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 they've got all the titles anyway, so momentum is still going to be firmly on their side whether they win or lose. Yeah, absolutely. My hope is that everybody just comes out of Survivor Series unscathed. Yeah, I think they will. And injury free. Um. I'm going to go for Team Champa. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and I don't think we'll find out who the last member of Team Champa is until the last person to come out of the cage. Yeah, exactly. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for Team Champa. I, I would... Uh, Undisputed Era win all the time, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but I would like to see Team Champa get a bit of momentum. I really, I love Keith Lee, and I love oh, yeah. Dominic Dijakovic, and Champa speaks for himself. Great. Absolutely. Um, so on this day, Undisputed Era, and I reckon after the match, um, if it is Gargano who comes out, Champ is going to return heel and attack Gargano. Want to join the Undisputed Era? Um, I don't think to join the Undisputed Era. I just think he's going to be a heel on his own. Because okay. his character works, he's like he's a heel character, essentially. But it was obviously oh, turned... Oh, definitely, yeah, 100%. Yeah, obviously turned him face because, you know, he's returning uh, ex-champion. But I think they're going to return him heel and then have that feud carry on because it's never really properly ended. Um, once uh, Champa got injured, so yeah, I think I'm gonna say that. Okay. Not about yeah. hey, look, not a bad guess. Not beyond the realms of possibility either. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We will. And then we have the first ever women's war games match: uh, Team Ripley versus Team Baszler. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. Um, some very very talented women there. One hundred percent. Yeah, I like that Team Basel doesn't have her two friends in it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Because they weren't, they wouldn't be ready for this. They're not. They're still very. No, no, definitely not. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, oh God, it is. It is a tough one. Um, awesome to see Kaylee Ray get the nod uh, for Team Basel. I think that's yeah, cool. Awesome that they're integrating NXT UK and making that seem, making that feel important. Um, Shayna wins all the time. She does. Uh, I would like to see Team Ripley win this one. Uh, cool. But then I would like to see Shayna Baszler win at Survivor Series, but obviously we'll talk about that shortly. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm going to say I'm gonna say Team Baszler, but I'm going to say um, Ripley eliminates uh, Baszler. So they have a few going forwards. Say, I beat you at War Games. You made one of the match, but I beat you. Blah, 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 blah. T- um, championship match, please. Um, yeah. Um, that, again, totally plausible. I mean, I see Team... Um, Team Ripley winning, and then that being the case going forward. Like my team beat your team. I was the captain. Give me a title shot, type thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm to go anyway. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a great show. I mean, mm, um, so Takeover always delivers. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm sure tonight will be no different at all. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so then, Survivor Series the next day. Yep. So um, much wrestling this weekend. We're going to be wrestling out next week. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, cool. Um, we're going to talk about it, actually. It's going to be a good one to talk about. Um, yeah. But then, first, wait, as far as this, first match on there, we have another match I'm really looking forward to. United States champion AJ Styles versus Intercontinental champion Shinsuke Nakamura versus North American champion Roderick Strong. Speaking of, what do you think of the new uh, Intercontinental championship? I think it looks great. It looks good. Yep. I, I really like it. I think it's. I think it's cool. I prefer the old one, to be honest. And I do think the new ones should have had, like, 
a different strap, like a white strap to match your one. Because right now I think it looks a bit generic and kind of the same as everything else. Um, think no, about no, this no, for a second. Out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, remember the Cody Rhodes gimmick where he was the IC champion and they had the um, the other IC, the, like, the Attitude Era IC title. Mm-hmm. And then Cody Rhodes said he didn't want to have that title anymore. He wanted to go back to the traditional one. And he, Cody Rhodes is the reason that we now, that we had that Intercontinental Championship with the white strap. Mm, good point. Now they've changed it. Fair point, fair point. No, I'm not saying they're connected in any way, but it makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, but in, I really in, like it. I think I think it looks really nice. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I think it's just, the black strap kind of ruins it a bit for me. It would be nice to have like a, a proper white, white strap, but... It's cool. I'll get you sure. Uh, I've, no, I've no issue with the. Uh, I think because the women's titles have white straps. True. I think. Um, I think to be honest, with you, it should all be the same. Who cares? But um, yeah. you know, you know, the uh, United States Championship has a black strap. Um, it doesn't doesn't mean doesn't matter to me. Yeah, that's but fair. I, I think it's I think it's really cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, cool. All right. So who's gonna win the match? Um, I don't know. <laughs> is the, is the answer to that um, I think the fact that Shinsuke Nakamura has just been given a new championship um, would point to him winning yeah whether that, that is a, a, a defining factor or not um, I just think it's a strange time to give it him um, like before the pay-per-view true but at the same uh, time not after so I don't know yeah at the same time WWE's weird that doesn't make sense a lot of time <laughs> no, you're right. What you're absolutely correct. Um, I'm going to go with Nakamura. Cool. Uh, yeah, I can see it happening for sure. Um, I'm going to go with Roderick Strong because I, I feel NXT is going to be dominant. I think they want to. Well, they want NXT to be big going forwards. I think they want to show that off. This, I mean, this has the potential to be match of the weekend if it's given time to breathe. Definitely, yeah, it's going to be so good. It's going to be very interesting to see what kind of crowd is at Survivor Series. Whether we're going to have a very pro NXT takeover type crowd. Hmm. I think it'll be mixed. I think there'll be the guys in there who's like, they have NXT and there'll be also the casual fans. So we'll get like a weird mix of half the crowd cheering for one and another half cheering for the other. Which, which is a good thing, really, because yeah. you, want, you want that, you know. Definitely. I mean, that, that that should realistically be what they've been looking for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, right, so then we have... Hold on, I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, yeah, we have the Warriors back on NXT teams battling in the traditional uh, Safari Series elimination match. Well, we don't actually know who's on NXT's team, do we? Yeah, NXT is still up in the air. Uh, well, we've got uh, Kevin Owens, Ricochet, Seth, Randy Orton, and uh, Drew Angtai. SmackDown's got Shorty G. Uh, Mustafa Ali's hmm. got his first name back. Uh, Roman yep. Reigns. Congratulations. Yeah, yep, congrats. Roman Reigns, uh, Baron Corbin, sorry, King Baron Corbin, and Big Boy, Big Boy Braun. Yeah, I think Raw definitely, I mean, Raw has a beast of a team. Yeah, seriously. What a fucking team on paper that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, who do you think will be on the NXT team? Uh, well, they had a little standoff at the end of SmackDown between Keith Lee and Braun Strowman, which is pretty cool. So I reckon Keith Lee will be Keith, on there. Keith Lee, right, has, I think had a better spotlight than um, almost anybody aside from Adam Cole. Yeah, seriously. Um, during this whole thing. He's just, he's shone and he's been absolutely brilliant. And he's, you know, he's done himself a lot of favours, I think. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, it's so good. Yeah, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. I want to, I want to say like you know, guys like Champa, Dijakovic, but they're already doing war games. I don't know if they want to have it. You know, this seems being virtually, virtually the same, or if they want to mix it up. Thing is, if they win war games, mm. that makes them look insanely strong. So there's no reason why you couldn't have uh, those four and someone else. Yeah, true. You you need to have a team that's, um, you know, as good. As everyone else, Drew, very Drew. By like, don't have the fucking forgotten sons. Yeah, <laughs> and like, or um, you know, um, Kona Reeves, or so you know, okay. people like that. He's the finest. Um, I think Walter. I think Walter will be on the team. Ooh, good pick. That'd be awesome. Uh, because Walter was there last night, and they have been involved in this invasion. They were on SmackDown in Chicago. Yeah. Um. So awesome. I think Walter will be on the team. Yeah, I'm going to have to see that. That'd be cool. The other two I'm not sure about. Yeah, so you made a prediction, prediction last week about um, Kevin Owens joining NXT. I mean, we had that sort yeah. of standoff in the ring on War. Yeah. Um, do you think that goes ahead? Do you think Kevin Owens is going to uh, join NXT's team or 
I, I think somebody does. I think somebody jumps ship, definitely. I don't know who. Um, my gut would still say Kevin Owens. I don't think it'll be Seth Rollins. I think yeah. he's too valuable to Raw. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but Kevin Owens, I think, um, you know, him going back down to NXT would not harm him whatsoever. And I think it'd be great, to be honest. I think uh, Kevin Owens would like it as well. Mm, it makes sense. So, he's yeah. not really doing anything in Raw, and he's like, there's not like got any future plans for him. So I think it would make sense for him to go back to NXT. Definitely. But I want him to stick with NXT. If he's going to turn and join Team NXT, then he needs to sort of stay in NXT. Yeah, you know, for I a agree. Bit. Yeah, cool. Um, right, who wins the match? Who do you reckon is going to come out on top? NXT because of the turn. Yeah, I think you're right. What, I mean, if WWE are going to work the way that I think WWE do work, then it'd be SmackDown because <laughs> SmackDown on Fox, Fox is the, with, is the new toy and it's the thing that they're all promoting and all that sort of stuff. But um, I want, and it, you know, I absolutely love NXT. I've watched it since the very start and I actually care about NXT winning matches. I don't care about Raw or SmackDown because they haven't done a good enough job of making me care, but they haven't had enough time to do so either. I am going to go with NXT because I think there's going to be a turn from one of the big stars on the Raw team. Cool. So good to me. Awesome. If it's going to be anyone, it'll be uh, Kevin Owens. Oh, yeah, I agree. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm going to say NXT. I agree with that. I think it makes sense. Um, and then we have... Uh, oh, the women's, women's Battle Royal. Uh, well, that's my down NXT. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, again, we don't know, really know uh, NXT's team. We got Rhea Ripley. I think we, I, I think we do. Um, I, mean, I think the, the, the I think the ones that showed up on SmackDown last night are the, are the team. Oh yeah, of course, I forgot that. Um, yeah, sorry, so just Ripley, on... Tony Storm. Uh, yes, I'm trying to find the list who's here. Appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tegan Knox. Uh, Dakota Kai, I think was there. Yeah, I think. I can't remember. I'm looking I can't at the, remember uh, who else. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, Survivor Series thing here. It doesn't say. It's just got Rhea Ripley on there. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. I think it'd be those, those five. Well, there's no reason to cart Tony Storm to Chicago and not use her. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Does that make sense? So, I think t- Tony Storm will definitely be part of it. I think the five that were there last night will be the five that are on. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think SmackDown will win one of the Survivor Series matches. So, if it's <laughs> going to be um, any of them, I think it'd be the uh, Survivor Series women's one. Right, SmackDown's the worst one though. Dana Brooke, really? Come on. I know. I, I <laughs> look. I know. It's either that or SmackDown win the men's one, and still they have the worst team. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't even know who's on the NXT team yet, apart from what like, we're guessing at Walter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know Dana Brooke. <laughs> Shorty G. Shorty G's a great wrestler. Oh yeah, be. he's great. But he's a terrible gimmick. Um, it's tough. It's, it's really hard to call. Yeah. Because I want to say NXT again. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Um, I think SmackDown will win it. I'm just going to say SmackDown because I don't know. Yeah, it's fair enough. Um, like you, I think I think SmackDown probably will win one, but I also think NXT will win one, um, at least. So I'm going to say NXT again because heads my bets. One that's going to win it. Um, yeah. Raw quick, raw clean sweep inbound. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Um, cool. Then we got the uh, tag team championship match, which not championship match, but it's tag team champions in a match. Um, yeah. Viking Raiders versus SmackDown champions, which are New Day, uh, versus the uh, Undisputed Era. <sighs> Can't uh, fish in their This has again. This has potential to be one hell of a match. Oh yeah. Holy shit. I do kind of wish rivals down there, but yeah. Me too. But. You know, you can't go wrong with New Day, probably. Yeah, that's true. New Day, great. Um, God, this this one is tough. <laughs> uh, I think... Um, I think Viking Raiders might win. Ooh. Yeah. I don't them. know why. I don't know why. I don't have an excuse. The thing is, I think it's so hard to call. Yeah, it really is. Because uh, like, if it was up to me, I would pick NXT for all of these matches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right because I think God, Viking Raiders still being being built up. Like New Days, everyone knows who New Day is. They're great. It's all, everyone knows who the Undisputed Era is, but Viking Raiders are still kind of sort of unknown, at least on the main roster. So yeah, I'm going to see that happening. Yeah, they're, they're they're very underutilized. I know they're the Raw Tag Team Champions, so it's weird to say that they're unknown. But you're right. 
because the, the way that they've been booked and the way that they've gone about it, it just, you know, it hasn't been great, even though they are the champions. Um, so I, I would like to see the Viking. I would like to see the Undisputed Era win, but I would like to, I think the Viking Raiders will win. Cool. Good bet. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Undisputed Era. I'm going to say NXT. I'm going to say the team NXT all the way. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'd, I'd be I'd, delighted. Yeah, I'd want, I'd want an NXT clean streak. It won't happen, but that's what I want. <laughs> no, I, I think Fox would be desperately unhappy with an NXT clean sweep. Yeah, you're right. But hey, I can dream. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Then we've got um, the women's championship match, or champion match. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Bailey versus Shayna Baszler. <sighs> Again, this is super tough. <laughs> Three insanely talented women. Um, the most of the most of the build-up has really been Becky and Shayna. True. And for that reason and that reason alone, I'm going with Bailey. Oh, interesting. Uh, like she it. took out the entire NXT women's division on her little visit to NXT. <laughs> Literally uh, killed all of them. Stood, stood tall, looking like an absolute badass at the end of that episode of NXT. But the most part has been Becky and Shayna going back and forth. And I think Bailey is the the silent anomaly in all of this, and mm. I think she emerges victorious. Yeah, and she's got this new heel character as well. They need to. Yeah, stands tall at the end of. So, you know, um, I think Shayna and Becky will be an awesome feud going forward. Mm. But I just see. I don't think it's Shayna that takes the pin. I think it's Becky. Um, I think Bailey to Belly, or so, either way, Bailey wins. Yeah, and she's got a new finish now, and she got the weird bulldog kind of thing. I think. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I could definitely, yeah, again, I can see, definitely see that. Um, er, I don't know. Uh, as, as you said, it's, all these matches are really tough to call. Um, it is. It's really tough. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. NXT all the way. Shayna Baszler. You're just, you're just putting it out there. I am. Team NXT. Team NXT all the way. I'm going to lose this bet so hard. <laughs> I hope not, to be honest. I would love to see a clean sweep of NXT, but it won't happen. Oh, that'd be great. Um, I think if, if the women's match is the main event, which I think it's going to be, mm. um, then I think um, the Bailey will stand tall for SmackDown on Fox. That makes sense. I like that. It's shit that that is a determining factor <laughs> in these predictions. Yeah. But I think it's that's what's going to happen. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, then we have... Um... Adam Cole versus whoever wins the drop of that match at War Games. Uh, for the NXT I think Adam Cole will retain. Don't see him losing the championship. Oh, yeah. I'd be very surprised if any any of the main champions lost their belts. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think Adam Cole's as NXT champion is not going anywhere for a while. Not yet. There's not there's um, not to somebody uh, with a build that means very little. Uh, yeah, exactly. So yeah, Adam Cole all the way for that. Yep. Cool. Then we've got a couple of championship matches. Uh, yep. We've got The Fiend, Ray Wyatt, versus Daniel Bryan. Yep, I think The Fiend will definitely win. No way is he dropping that belt yet. I Not think no. um, The Fiend will drop the belt to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> don't say it. No jinx it. I'm, honestly, I'm fine with it. Mm. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with uh, Roman... This, oh, this is going to boil piss. I know <laughs> it is. But Roman is the face of the company. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's great. I don't, I don't think he has and Roman. And he should... I think it's long overdue for him to have a good run with the championship. Not a, just a, a shitty run that he's had before. Yeah. Like a real good run as the face of the company. Um, so I think, um, I don't think he wins the Royal Rumble because people will hate that shit. <laughs> um, but I think he will beat the Fiend at WrestleMania for the championship. Oof. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I, 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 could, I could definitely say it, but uh, man, the internet, well, the internet will explode. I said, Usually does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, yeah, I think White as well for this match. I can't see... I don't think Danny Bryan's going to be the one to take the championship away from Bray. Not yet. No, I think this feud goes on. I don't think um, it stops here. Yeah. Also, request, please don't use a red light. Just have a normal light. Get rid of the red light. It's annoying. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we have, of course, what's probably going to be the main event. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio. In a no holds barred no disqualification match, um, I think Brock retains. Yeah, and this, I think it's a great match. You know, Rey Mysterio is great at this uh, big man versus little man kind of. Yeah, match. and Brock always has really good matches against smaller opponents. Yeah, 
when he cares. Finn Balor, Daniel <laughs> Bryan, AJ Styles. Um, I'm, and I think Brock is really starting to sort of um, truly appreciate his role in WWE. Mm. Uh, I think he's embracing it a lot more. Um, not taking himself as serious as he perhaps was when he first came back. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I, th- I think Brock will win, but I've got a feeling that Rey Mysterio will win that battle eventually. Yeah, maybe. Like you can tell, he's on his way out. I don't think he's. I think he was saying he hasn't resigned yet. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, we've done to see Rey Mysterio's champ again, at least one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Yeah, say I'm gonna say Lesnar will as well. Unless maybe yeah. maybe uh, Walter's son Dominic will come in and some cause some sort of <laughs> <laughs> distraction or help Ray win. Who knows? Mm. I'll say Lesnar. Lesnar's a safe bet. I think. I think so. Yeah. Cool, and that's pretty much it for the raw predictions. So I mean, it should be a great weekend of wrestling. Yeah, absolutely, It'd be amazing. Uh, and I hope it is. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I hope after this, everything goes back to normal, uh, which I think it probably will. Yeah. And yeah, we'll be all good. Cool. Oh yeah. One more thing we forgot about last week and almost forgot yep. about this week. CM Punk. He's back on Delhi. He is back <laughs> on WWE TV. It's very exciting. You know, people try to put a little bit of a dampener on it on the internet as they always do. Oh, he's signed to Fox. I don't really care who he's signed to. Don't care if you've spoken to anybody in WWE. I don't care about any of that crap. Um, all I care about, and it's a big milestone, mm. is the fact that he's back on TV, involved with WWE in some way, which, you know, a lot of people never thought would ever happen, myself potentially included. Yeah, it's it's a huge deal, I think. Um, it's great to see him back on Weekly Selling. I got an awesome, awesome promo on last week's um, show, whatever it's called. Um, back, WWE Backstage. That's the one. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's, he hasn't lost a step, promo wise. He's awesome. Oh, he's awesome. Um, NXT, uh, sorry, NXT and Survivor Series are in Chicago. Do we see him this weekend? Ooh, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's there yet. I don't think bridges have been built just yet. I do think they will. We will see him on TV at, at some point on WWE, but not yeah. yet. I think it's going to take a, take a while to get that uh, relationship built back up. I think you're probably right. Um, one can dream though. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see him. Don't get me wrong; it'd be all, like amazing. Imagine he'd pop you to get. Um, oh god, it'd be ridiculous. Yeah, but not yet. He will eventually, but not yet. Okay. Um, another thing, we talked about it last week, uh, but now Jordan Miles has been released from his WWE contract. Yes. I and now why. he's going back to work on the Indies <laughs> because I don't think I think the only big company that would touch him would be Impact. I don't think he would AEW would entertain it. No, I think yeah, not after all this. <laughs> yeah. Um, more power to him. I hope he goes out and finds happiness, but I don't think he'll ever find himself on the big stage again. No, he's kind of burnt bridges there, I think, isn't he? I think that bridge is well and truly burnt, yeah. 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 So Thanks. he's going back to where the Indies. Good for him. We'll never see him again. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's the end of that saga, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All because of a stupid fucking t shirt. <laughs> yeah, I know. So crazy. Crazy. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much... We've talked about everything that we can talk about. Yeah, I think so. Good episode. Awesome. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, go check us out on all the socials that we spoke about at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, for now, this has been episode 106 of the Games and Graps podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Saturday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And YouTube.com forward slash Games and Graps. Yep. And Facebook. Uh, the Games and Grats podcast page. Yes. And Twitch. All and right. Twi- and now, Twitch. thank you very much for listening. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Divas. <laughs> <laughs>